Welcome back to Information Technology Fundamentals. In this lecture, we're going to be looking at networking concepts. We're going to look at how the components and functions of computer networks are put together. We're going to list the protocols and technology used for the different types of addressing on computer networks. We're going to look at how to connect a computer to both a wired and a wireless network and describe all of the common application protocols that are used in networking. Let's begin by defining what networking is. It is two or more computer systems that are linked together by some form of transmission media that allows them to share information. Sometimes we'll say data in motion or data in transit is what a network is. Uh, in that, we typically have uh, clients and servers. And furthermore, we divide networks into local area networks, commonly known as LANs, and wide area networks known as WANs. So an example of a WAN is going to be the internet, and a local area network is going to be all the <coughs> computers and devices connected to your home network. So we're going to use the term network media to describe the what connects computers together. And really there's uh, three basic types of media that we use to do that. Copper cabling, which is your standard, uh, what's frequently called your Ethernet, but your twisted pair cable. Fiber optic cabling, so cables that can carry a light. And we're going to consider Wi-Fi or radio um, that as a type of media as well. The individual devices that are connected to the network are going to be described as nodes or hosts. And wide area network uh, uses the same type of media. It uses fiber optic. But the radio it uses is different from Wi-Fi, point-to-point uh, -point radio, cellular radio, and satellite. We can consider that radio, too, as it transmits data over radio waves. In order to send information across uh, a media to another computer, we have to have some kind of standard and some type of protocol that's used. So the format for computers to exchange the data over the network uses frames and packets, and we use addresses to identify interfaces. Now those addresses will fall into two categories. They're either going to be physical, which is commonly a MAC address, or logical, which is typically a uh, IP address. The network frames and packets that are sent will be identified with a header, which tells the, the, the uh, network payload or the uh, network frame where to go, so it'll have a destination location, and the payload or the data that comes along with it. Our network media standards that we use uh, for uh, wired is going to be Ethernet, and our network standard we use for wireless is going to be Wi-Fi. Most local networks and the internet use the TCP IP uh, suite for addressing. There are two different ways we can get information from one place to another, uh, and that is going to be packet transmission and circuit-based switches or networks. A circuit-based network is like the old telephone service where you pick up your phone, you dial a number, and it rings uh, a specific other phone. And when those two phones connect, there is a dedicated wire between the two. So that's uh, called a circuit-based network. A packet-based network, which is what we usually see on the Internet, is going to take the the uh, data, break it into smaller packets, and each packet could have a separate route to the destination. They don't all stay, all the data does not stay all together. It's broken up and it may choose different paths. And in a packet-based uh, situation, routers are used to choose the best available path. In the packet-based uh, scenario, Lost and damaged packets can be sent, and the originator can resend those when needed. The TCP IP protocol suite uh, allows us to use a variety of different protocols that you can see on the right side of this diagram. 
Some of these protocols you may recognize right away, including HTTP, which is on the internet, uh, Telnet, SMTP, which is um, a simple mail transport protocol. So that is going to be email. When we think about how a TCP IP packet is put together, it's helpful to think about it in this layered uh, suite that we see in front of us. The TCP IP model consists of four layers, each with defined function. Each layer of the pro has protocols associated with the, within the suite and the supporting technologies that make use of these protocols in the layer below and provide services to the protocols in the layer above. Let's dive a little bit deeper into these layers. So the link or network interface layer is going to be the, sometimes we might even call it the physical layer. So this is where the computer is interacting with the network, uh, either through ethernet or Wi-Fi, and it converts the data into frames and it makes use of the media. So it's going to be copper uh, light or Wi-Fi. The internet layer is going to encapsulate the packets into what we call datagrams, and it takes care of the routing between the different network. Three key protocols used in here are the IP, the address resolution protocol ARP, and the internet control message or ICMP. The transport layer protocols provide communication sessions between computers. Each application protocol is identified at the transport layer by a port number. There are two transport protocols, TCP, Transport Control Protocol, and UDP, User Datagram Protocol. TCP is for connections, and the uh, UDP provides connection-less delivery. A connection-oriented delivery means that when the packet is sent and the receiver receives it, it notifies the sender that it successfully received it. In a UDP, the information just goes out and the sending computer never receives confirmation of delivery. The application layer in the suite is the top layer that contains the protocols for communicating for communication formats, uh, exchanging data between the hosts, such as transmitting an email message or requesting a web page. So what's in an IP packet? Well, there's some basic things that are always in it. One is a source IP address, the sender, destination IP address, where it's going to, what the protocol is that's going to be used, so UDP or TCP, a checksum to verify the integrity of the uh, data, and something called time to live. Time to live is the number of seconds that the data is going to be allowed to stay on the network before it is discarded. That way we don't have uh, data that never ends, gets to the receiver just running around the network. That would eventually shut down our networks. So all the packets that are sent have to have a time to live, or really it's an expiration date on each packet. Let's talk about IP addresses. Uh, the most common that we see is the IPv4, which is a 32-bit binary value, and it's Expression is called a dotted decimal form. And on this slide, we can see we have 172.30.15.12. That's the most common uh, type of address we see in um, local area networks. And there is an IPv6, which is a much bigger address, 128-bit versus 32-bit. And when we see that address, it'll be in hexadecimal form. But let's uh, look at this chart at the bottom here of the slide, and you'll notice that uh, we have taken 172 and we have changed it into binary format. So 172 is 10101100. One, zero, one, zero, one, one, zero, zero. And just like we did in the previous uh, module, we, we can determine the value of this. But why this is important is because this is how 172 is represented in binary and there is eight placeholders, which means the maximum value for anything in the dotted decimal is going to be 255. And we'll see more of this uh, when you go further into networking and subnetting, subnetting, you'll deal with this quite a bit more.
So as we look at that network address, uh, the key here is we have to be able to tell the computer what part of that address is network and what part of the address is host. So the way that's done is through something called a subnet mask, which tells the computer what part of the address is host and what part of the address is uh, network. So far we've looked at IP addresses, in particular IPv4 addresses. And in this diagram here on the right side, you can see that each of the devices on here has an IP address. And when we use IP addresses, that allows our uh, data to move from one network to another. A router is used to connect two different IP networks together. However, that is a little bit slow and a little bit cumbersome. In a local area network, we use the MAC address, which we can see here uh, as a 40-bit expressed in hex uh, address. And the switch on a local area network looks at the MAC address, moves the or sends the data to the correct port on the switch. Now, this is a lot faster than IP uh, routing, but it has a downside in that the MAC address has no information about a network on it. So a MAC address can't be used to send information from one network to another. So we have to use uh, and we use MAC addressing and IP addressing together. The MAC address allows for fast movement of data on the local area network and the router allows for data to move from one network. Because IP and MAC addresses are hard to remember, we need to come up with a easier way to remember websites and uh, devices on a network. And for us humans, it's much easier for us to remember a name than a number. So the domain name system was devised to help us humans navigate the web. And on here, we'll see a couple different examples on the upcoming slides. But what we have here is our root directory. And then we have a top level domain, so .com, .edu, .org. And then underneath each one of these top level domains, we'll have individual websites. So Microsoft.com, Cisco.com. And the domains are registered at the TLD or the top level domain. So Microsoft is res registered with the .coms and edu, so csc.edu would be registered with this top level domain. So both on a local area network and on the wide area network or the internet, we have something called a fully qualified domain name. And what that means is anytime we list the host name, so in this example, my mail, with the domain name, some website, and the TLD subject or suffix, when we list all those three things together, we have something called the fully qualified domain name. Internet websites also refer to something called a URL or Uniform Resource Locator. And this is slightly different because now at the front end of the, uh, the uh, address, we have a protocol and then we have a subdomain. So we have a protocol of HTTP, a subdomain of www, our domain name of Google, our top level domain name of .com, and lastly, we also include the file path. So this is telling it what web page to grab off of google.com. So what happens when we type a website address in to our, our browser? Well, a lot of things happen behind the scenes, but a DNS query or a domain name service query happens. And that is the process by which our name, in this case, careers.github.com, is given to the DNS server and it is going to reply with the IP address, the numbers. So that takes uh, several different things to happen. If a company has their own DNS server, then the query goes to it first. If you have a Soho network, this uh, corporate one would be your ISP's, typically your ISP's DNS server. So your request goes to a DNS server. It then looks for a root server and it says, I don't have it. 
it looks for the top level domain server. So in this time, it, in this instance, it finds the .com DNS server and it finds it or doesn't have it. And it says, okay, I'm going to send you over to the github.com server and it receives the request and it says, oh, I know what that IP address is. And it sends it all the way back to the originating DNS server, which sends it to your computer. Now this happens all the time and it happens really quite quickly. Your request, your DNS request could go through two, four, or maybe even more servers than that before the IP address actually gets back to your uh, PC. Let's talk about HTTP and HTML. So really we're talking about web pages. And these two ideas are somewhat confused at times, but the HTTP is the hypertext transfer protocol. So it is the protocol or it tells the computer how to send the information. HTML is a hypertext markup language and that is the code of the pages uh, that is sent over. So our HTML travels back to our computer from a web page using the HTTP protocol. Electronic mail or email uses three basic types of protocols. Simple mail transfer protocol, which works in combination with a mail exchanger, typically a exchange server. And then we have POP3, and IMAP. So your email can use uh, any of those three and in fact it may use them in combination with each other. SSL and TLS are se the secure socket layer and the transport layer security. This is what gives our communication confidentiality between the server and the client and it is it uses encryption. TLS is the current standard um, and along with that, something called a certificate is issued to a website. When a website has a certificate, then we as the consumer know we can trust the website and a third party issues the uh, certificate and verifies the company information for us. So we looked at the different components and functions of computer networks uh, along with the protocols and some different types of technology used for addressing computers on a network. We looked at how a computer connects both to wired and wireless networks using MAC and IP address. And we